Good evening. This is the Fragrance Apprentice. You've caught me chillaxing here in my back garden. I've got a rather bitching pool, as the kids of today say, in the background over there. Today we're going to be talking about a rather controversial fragrance, actually. Um, it's Olivier Creed's take on vetiver. Uh, it is Original Vetiver by the House of Creed. So, um... Original Vetiver by Creed, um, there's a sort of a bit of an in-joke with the the, the Creed fragrances um, because the two fragrances that are called original, uh, those are the ones that aren't necessarily uh, original. Vetiver is uh, seen to be um, a copy of Mugler Cologne and Santal is seen to be a a copy of Mont Blanc Individual. So I wanted to tell you sort of as a reviewer how I feel about um, copying, influencing, stealing, maybe, all those kinds of things, and that is this. As I've said many a time, you're sick of me saying it by now, this is an art form. In every single art form, there is influence, and there is, in fact, actually, um, most artists in art college, they're told, the first thing they're told to do is to copy a master's work, and then through gaining that process, you can then create your own work. I actually personally, when I started, when I was first a fragrance reviewer, I did, and I will honestly say this, I copied Hero. I copied Miguel, uh, Hero uh, Yokozuna, because I wanted to be him, because I saw his work and I saw how amazing it was. Um, And then I decided, well, I want to be like that. I want to get that reaction from people, the same reaction that he's got from me. But um, there's also in fragrance the, the fragrance industry is similar to the film industry and the uh, music industry. And I'm talking quite a lot here. This is quite a rambly introduction, but I think it's, it is important. It is relevant. So, it's similar to the film industry in the fact that, you know, we have flankers, which are kind of like sequels, the similar marketing, um, similar sort of industry in the way of uh, finances and, and money. But it's also very similar to m- the music industry in one big way, and that is sampling. Um, so, sampling is something um, that started actually um, mostly through hip hop in the 1980s. Um, it has, of course, now gone on to a point where it's almost too much and too uh, too ridiculous. Where, as Prince joked, we're now sampling uh, songs that have sampled samples. So, I want to give you an example um, of one of the best. Um, sampled pieces of music um, ever. It's called Signatune by DJ Medi. The original um, sample is called, uh, I think it's called Stroking by Dynasty, and that sounds like this. And then... Um, DJ Medi, uh, the late DJ Medi, actually, he, he died because of a, an accident, terrible accident. He sampled it and he made this. And that's fantastic. But actually, how I would see original Vetiver is not DJ Medi's sampling dynasty. It's actually what happened. It's actually what happened next. So, DJ Medi makes, makes Signature it's about, this track is great, but it's about a minute long, right? So it's, it's, it's good, he's used that loop, he's, he's, he's taken something, he's created something, and it, it, it's a nice little sound. But what happens next is Thomas Bangletair, and at this point you're thinking to yourself, Jesus Christ, George, who are these freaking people? You're so pretentious, we don't know who these people are. You do know who, you, well, you may not know the name Thomas Bangletair, but you certainly know um, the electronic duo that he's in, which is, of course, Daft Punk. And Daft Punk are artists who rely on sampling. Uh, to give you an example, here is Release the Beast, um, a 1980s song, I believe. Release! And the point here is, is that what Daft Punk saw in that is that they saw something within that little loop. After that, the piece of music, the original piece of music, changes and it goes into something quite different. But Daft Punk saw something within that and thought you could actually make a really good hook from that and make an, an, an original track. And of course they made Robot Rock. So, Thomas Bangletair, he heard Signature 
and he thought this is great this is a really great start of a piece of music but there's so much more that could be evoked that could be transmitted from this piece of music so by adding and i'd say that these are relatively simple changes but it's transformed it in such a way he uh, changed the equalization he added a drum beat he added a, his own flair to it a breakdown and made, turned it into a six minute epic long track which is one of my favorite pieces of music called signature And so within that, um, it became quite a hit uh, in the French ele electro house scene. They were even able to make a music video from it. And the music video is very telling of what that piece of music evokes. It evokes victory. It evokes um, a, a journey, a discovery. Um, I absolutely love it. From he's made a six minute um, journey that evokes so much emotion, um, has b became such a hit from just a one minute little sample um, by the original uh, music producer and that's actually how I see original vetiver and that's how I see an appropriate way of taking something seeing something within it and then adding your own flair adding your own story to it it's actually seeing something within a piece of art and going you know what I, I can see that and I see what they're going for but they don't understand how, how, how far that piece of art could be pushed to its maximum now if you do that then you are still an artist in fact you are quite a unique artist you are a sampler you are somebody who has taken a seed of something and created uh, a tree and that for me is original vetiver's relationship to moogla clone if olivier creed did see something within that um, I do not feel as though he he stole it or he ripped it off. I well, we don't even know if if he if he if he did or if he didn't. If it was his own creation, but let's say just for um, a hypothesis that he did, he 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 did uh, smell Moogle cologne, and he went, you know what? I can see what you're going for, but that could really be pushed into a whole new direction. So I can definitely say that about Moogle cologne original vetiver, Mont Blanc individual and original Santal on the other hand. Um, uh, no, those fragrances are insanely similar. They are very, very uncanny. They are a, almost a mirror image of each other. And I cannot, um, I cannot defend that. I cannot really see anything being pushed or pulled or changed in uh, Original Santal. That, 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 that I don't see a story in Original Santal that hasn't already been told in Mont Blanc Individual. And for that reason, I would always buy Mont Blanc Individual. But there is a clear difference to me, a clear difference in story, difference in portrayal from Moogler to Original Vetiver. And that's why I have in my hands Original Vetiver and not Moogler Cologne. So the presentation of um, Original Vetiva is absolutely lovely. Of course, I don't have the cap of this. I don't have um, the caps from um, most of the creeds that I buy at the moment um, because I suppose the best way to put it is I, I get it off the grey market. Um, I think that the uh, price point of creed is something that we're going to be talking about uh, the latter end of this review. But for now, let's go with the presentation. It's beautiful. All of the creed fragrances are wonderful. Um, I even like their new 100ml and 50ml uh, setup presentations. Um, they're quite uh, nice, very regal. I like the Creed thing, uh, like the Creed logo a lot. A nice little bit of um, uh, detail at the bottom there. It's a really, really beautiful bottle. It's a bottle that uh, I've learned to love um, throughout the many years that I've been uh, purchasing and admiring Creed's work. So I'm happy to give it um, a five out of five. Um, there's just something so simplistic and beautiful about it. So the scent. Um, again, I, I talked in the introduction a lot about um, the fact that I feel as though this, this has a true depth to it. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of thoughts and nuances put in. The way that the vetiver is used, this fragrance has so much depth uh, within it. There is such a strong edge um, in the fragrance, in the scent itself, and it's something that I truly, truly love. I've got this on my tweed jacket, actually, at the moment. I should have put it on my skin, um, but I do kind of know it off by heart at this point. So we start off at the top with this 
incredible um, beautiful kind of citrus it's like lime it's like a limey um, smell and that uh, barricades off with um, the woods but it's kind of like a ricey wood with the vetiver I think that it's using the vetiver root I don't know that for certain but it has more of that rooty ricey smell along with it so you have the citruses you have the greenness you have the limeness it has almost like um, a bit of a sticky quality actually with the on this sort of nice sticky um, limey almost sort of um, I wouldn't say gummy um, but it's like a I could imagine this being a drink at the top actually I could imagine this actually being a sort of a, a cocktail um, it's so wonderfully uh, balanced and then it does glide into um, some very soft woods I could imagine like white woods actually uh, and that's very aerated um, very nice and it's 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 fantastic. I I really love this scent, and the thing that I have with it is that there's not too much out of place with it, and with the edge that it's brought, with those extra woods, with that extra sort of ricey quality, there is a depth in here that I feel as though Mugler Cologne doesn't have. In fact, Mugler Cologne for me can go a bit bitter. It can go a bit watery. It can go uh, a bit sort of um, just it, it it starts off great but this thing really goes into um the depth of which i've spoken about i'm happy to give the scent actually a five out of five because i see no problem with it its execution is fantastic i love wearing it people around me do really like it and there's a lot to behold and there's been a lot of thought put into it i have got no problem giving this one a five out of five um so there we go the projection and longevity is actually surprising. Creed is well known for, even though they have a large oil content, their scents do not last. But the projection is very, very impressive. I'd say very good. Not exceptional, not outstanding, but very good. It's the longevity department that absolutely um, that, that, that gets it for me. The longevity, I get 12 hours. I could see some people not getting that but for me this thing lasts and lasts um, in abundance it's really really great so I'd give the projection I'd say a three out of five but I'd give the longevity for this for this a citrus vetiver based fragrance that has a lot of water flowing through it a four out of five easily I can have a lot of fun on this channel and you know I do the jokes and all that kind of stuff but to be serious um, the concept of somebody copying or stealing work um, can be a serious thing to to say and to infer um, I feel as though um, with original vetiver it is um, definitely influenced by Mugler Cologne but as I've said uh, in this video I feel as though he really truly may have seen well we don't even know for, for a fact that he it was even Mugler Cologne as his inspiration we can certainly infer that but we don't know it but if he did he definitely took influence from it and then took it to another level I really really love um, original vetiver um, and I think that one of the the biggest things for me is the organicness of it um, maybe that's unfair uh, budgetarily um, if that is even a word um, but Creed have the resources the ability the talent the skill to make what Mugler Cologne was attempting to do and make it into a rich environment um, and make it into a rich sort of vivid uh, landscape uh, and that is why I've picked uh, this location today so a really really truly beautiful fragrance but the price point I, I cannot, I can't, I can't let go of. Um, the current price for Aventus at the moment is uh, about $600 million and the sacrifice of your first virgin born. Uh, the price point of Creed is a real problem and it is something that I could at one point try to excuse and say, well, you know, you're not just buying a fragrance bottle, you're buying into history, you're buying into um, royalty, you're buying into legacy, um, and, it, you know, all of the things that go with uh, Creed and its masterful works and the true talent of who they are, but it is now gone way over and above that, and that will mark this fragrance down. 
amongst a couple uh, other things which I have already stated. So Creed's original vetiver, um, for me overall, will be getting a 4 out of 5. I hope that um, I have given you all the information that you, that you needed and that you wanted. Um, until I see you next week, I'm the Fragrance Press, and goodbye. Thank you.